What's good y'all, it's your boy Frankie T and we are back as you can tell we have a new setup here. We are in my room now. Had to get some things changed up because I hated that last background. It was so annoying. But today we're going to talk about the stock market and it is going to crash in 2022. This is going to be the video from my last video that I made before I had to take the little break. It, the audio and everything was just super garbage, but I'm going to kind of reintroduce those topics and kind of explain them in depth and whatnot because I really rushed the last time. So the first thing, the first thing that I believe on why the stock market will crash in the next year is the Fed buying mortgage-backed securities and treasuries. So they are purchasing, purchasing about $80 billion a month. So you see the stock market, how it's just been rising. For those of you guys that are investing, hopefully you guys are, are and if you're looking to see or try to get to investing, go ahead and click a link up here below or up at the top, not below, up at the top. And I'll have something, I have some videos for you guys that you guys can watch that I've made previously. But as we see the Fed, they've been printing all this money, $80 billion a month to buy bonds and whatnot, uh, mortgage-backed securities, like I mentioned. And so a lot of things are being artificially propped up by the Fed. And what this does is it brings all the supply into the market and basic economics you know there's supply and there's demand when there's more supply there becomes less demand of dollars or whatever asset that we're talking about you look at housing you know the housing market as well the same thing happened there where how the housing market went crazy uh you know housing was the supply of housing during covid was super low so it then sh shot up the prices of everything uh, housing the, in the housing market. So, you know, with looking at these the, these securities that keep being bought by the Fed, you know, it's only a matter of time that they've been propping everything up. There's going to be an even bigger, you know, move that's going to happen downwards once they start to ease off. And as we've seen in the last FOMC statement from, and if you guys don't know what the FOMC is, this is the committee, the committee and where the Fed chairman, Jerome Powell, they have a talk with uh, just people asking questions about the current state of the economy and whatnot, and what they're planning to do in the future. And Jerome Powell, he stated that they're going to be looking into tapering, tapering that's reducing this 80 billion in purchases every month. So if that happens, we can start to see the impact on the market. That's going to be a very interesting thing to see. Number two, interest rates. Interest rates are super, super low. And when interest rates are super low, that encourages people to go out and spend money. The United States is a country built off of debt. You look at everything, you have credit, we have all these things. Debt is what moves, makes the US. Without debt, we wouldn't really be having a lot of the things we have today or being able to leverage, like in housing, you wanna get a house, you're probably nine times out of 10 going into debt the average American. So we see with the interest rates, they're super low, they're encouraging people to spend. This is again why the housing market went crazy because you can go get a loan for two, 3% uh, interest rate. And so your monthly payment is really low. If you wanted to go borrow some money from the bank, your interest rate is low. So when something is low, you can't, when you can, you can only go so low because once you get as low as you can go, it can only go up from there. You, you feel me? If you're up high and you're super high, you can only come down. So interest rates can only go up from here. You know what I'm saying? And when those interest rates go up, you're going to see that effect in the stock market. You're going to see that effect in the housing market because now when people want to go and buy a house, they're going to look the interest rates high. That means you're going to have to pay a higher mortgage on their, you know, on their loan. You look at the stock market because interest rates are really high, it's going to cost them more money to even get into these asset classes and as well, you know, companies won't be able to get as much um they, there won't be as much, you know, buying into a company because interest rates are super high, they're jacked up. So things for companies, they are going to have to start jacking up their prices because they're going to be spending more and in turn, that means less profitability. So it's just a lot of things and that interest rate, the interest rate is really important. You know, having the interest rates low, we already see what it's doing. Inflation is a really real thing. I don't know if you guys have been to the store 
go to the store there are things that are way more expensive now the meats the the you know your your vegetables your fruits all that they're all getting expensive so that leads me into a segue into my next topic is the supply chain shortages again as i spoke about uh previously inflation is a very real thing you go to the store everything is getting really expensive why is that well everything was basically on a shortage um you know you have the you know certain foods you know they're getting on the shortage that's why i mean you see bill gates is buying all this farmland um you have glasses even on a shortage we even had you know lumber lumber was skyrocketing because of the excess of homes that are starting to be being built at least, at least in arizona in phoenix from what i see a lot of homes are being built those are jacking up those prices those prices are getting really really inflated but supply chain shortages are a real thing i personally work in it all right so i work in it obviously i work with laptops computers all that stuff and currently there is a shortage of the chips the microchips you know from china with everything that's going on in china so whenever we have to order laptops now it takes us a really really long time to get these laptops right so instead of having to wait like a week or two weeks to get these laptops maybe not even two weeks maybe a week to get these laptops it's taking us a month two months we know we put in an order for these laptops and now they took their we're not getting these laptops to october we order them in june you know and these laptops are going really expensive so these prices inflated because there's not enough chips you know microchips being around due to what happened in china and so now companies are going to have to jack up their prices in order to sell off their products to you know get profit have a profit margin so with these shortages you know it, it's just going to kind of price out people if things continue to get worse you know as far as with the pandemic which now leads me into coronavirus so the third thing the third fourth thing now that i'm on that you know i believe why the stock market will crash is the coronavirus as we see the coronavirus is kind of the main thing of what is causing everything that is going on today right everything that's going on today is being caused a lot by covid and the fight to beat covid and so we see the mortgage uh, forbearance and the eviction moratoriums that are out here. You know, people are being able to stay uh, stay in their homes. They're not paying any rent, you know, so we have landlords. So think about this. Just think about it this way. We have landlords that have to pay bills. They need to pay their rent. They need to do all these things. But their tenants are not able to get evicted. So, you know, they're not having to have to pay their rent. So they're able to still stay in their homes. And these landlords are struggling now because, you know, they're they're seeing this home now as a liability because they're not going to have to make payments on this home. They're, they're going to have to find ways to pay off this house. And it's just a lot of just just a lot of the, the moratoriums and the evictions just continue to be extended. So it's just making it harder and harder for, you know, uh, uh, these la landlords to, you know, make their cash flow from their properties so you know with these moratoriums going on you know it's it's continuing to add debt into the u.s as a whole and these people are instead of paying their bills now because i'm sure there are a lot of people that are in these moratoriums or this in the mortgage forbearance you know there was no reason you you didn't have to show any proof of any like financial uh struggle you could just go get that forbearance if you had a mortgage so i'm sure there are a lot of people that are not paying their bills right now and so you know if this can lead to a mass once this whole eviction moratorium uh or the yeah the eviction moratoriums and you know the mortgage forbearance starts to end we may see millions of americans you know being you know evicted out of their homes and seeing a just a complete crash of the housing market, you know. So not only is talking about the stock market, even the housing market too is is susceptible to this. There's a there's a bubble in a whole bunch of markets right now that you know it's just really being inflated and be, just being propped up. So you know I just want to highlight this to everybody to just pay attention to see what is going on because 
There are a lot of factors here that the Fed, the government, they're just propping everything artificially and then they'll tell you that the market or the economy is doing well. But it's really not. It's just them, you know, propping it up and, and keeping it going up because they're putting so much money into it. But eventually, eventually, unless we're going to socialism or something, that is going to have to stop. It's going to have to stop. You know what I'm saying? It's just going to have to stop. They're going to have to let it go. And when it happens and when things start to drop and when people start to get evicted, and it's just going to be a huge mass effect because once you continue to stretch that band and keep stretching it, eventually when you when it pops, it's it's gone. It's done. You know what I'm saying? So I really want to highlight this to you guys because, you know, uh, with all this news of things that uh, the economy is doing super well. I just, I mean, you ask me, I personally don't don't see that happening. So these are kind of, these are the reasons why, you know, that I believe that there will be a huge crash that's gonna be happening within 2022, 2023, you know, especially if they raise those interest rates and then the Fed starts to taper. We can see some crazy things happen in the housing and the stock market. So, you know, what do you guys think, you know, I mean, do you agree or disagree? You know, I'm always open to hear the other side, the opinions of what you guys have to say. You know, just comment down below. And if you felt like you learned something, go ahead and like, comment, share, subscribe. You know, we're about to hit our 20th subscriber. So thank you to you, all you guys that are showing that love and support. And, you know, I plan on dropping on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. So keep on the lookout for that. And I hope you guys have a wonderful day. We have a new setup. I'm sure you guys I'm sure you guys like it. I know the, the bed was 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 terrible. Just sitting there having <laughs> that background is terrible. But hope you guys have a wonderful one. And uh peace. See y'all. Two times. Hey. What? What? T Mills. Hey. I need that guap in my hand. 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 I need that guap in my hand.